In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. You forgave the iniquity of my sin. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, that we, and that we have sinned against you in, by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and has given His only Son to die for us and for His sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on His name, He gives power to become the children of God and has promised them His Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as we turn to Lutheran Service Book 219, The Order of Matins. O oh Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord.
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I invite the congregation to be seated as we now sing God's Own Child, I Gladly Say It, Lutheran Service Book 594.
The Old Testament reading is taken from the fifth chapter of the prophecy of Isaiah. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved had a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of stones and planted it with choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done in it? When I looked for it to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge, and it shall be devoured. I will break down its wall, and it shall be trampled down. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed, and briars and thorns shall grow up. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are his pleasant planting. And he looked for justice, but behold, bloodshed, for righteousness, but behold, an outcry. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is taken from St. Paul's epistle to the Philippians, the third chapter. If anyone thinks he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church." As to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, and may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, that by any means possible I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. O Lord, have mercy on us.
I invite the congregation to stand for the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 21st chapter. Jesus said, Hear another parable. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a winepress in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the Scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits, and the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. When the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parables, they perceived that he was speaking about them. And although they were seeking to arrest him, they feared the crowds because they held him to be a prophet. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. I invite the congregation to be seated. Grace be unto you, mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our text is our epistle for today. I'd like to add a few verses before. Finally, my brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things again is no trouble to me, and it is a safeguard for you. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, Beware of the false circumcision, for we are the true circumcision who worship in the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put to confidence or put no confidence in the flesh. Although I myself might have confidence even in the flesh, if anyone else has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more circumcised the eighth day of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness which is in the law, found blameless. But whatever things were gained to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ." 
More than that, I count all things to be loss in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but scubala, so that I may gain Christ, and may be found in him not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ." the righteousness which comes from God on the basis of faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. This is our text. This letter of the Apostle Paul to the Philippians has been called the Epistle of Joy. Our ladies have been studying it for a number of weeks on their two, at their Tuesday evening Bible study, and also, as we notice in our lectionary, it has followed the Epistle of St. Paul to the Philippians as the epistles for these Sundays. Even in such a joyful book of the Bible that has its so upbeat and so uh, filled with joy, yet there are unpleasant matters that uh, need to be attended to because the church lives in a sinful world in which there, of course, is those things which fight against the true gospel. In this particular passage, the Apostle Paul contrasts the two types of religion in the world. There are not many types of religion, there is only two. And we could say the right one and the wrong one. And it is the wrong one, of course, is the religion of the law. The right one is the religion of the gospel. Only the religion of the gospel is the true religion, and that, of course, is the holy Christian church's faith. It is the religion that shows the true way of eternal life. In our text, the Apostle Paul calls it the true circumcision. And we might say that there are two types of circumcision, at least in Jewish circles. There is the circumcision that is made with hands, and then there is the circumcision that is not made with hands by the power of God's Spirit through the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that, of course, is the circumcision that the Apostle Paul is talking about. We'll talk about that more later. The Philippian congregation was being warned by the Apostle Paul of a false circumcision. In fact, the Apostle Paul is so upset about this, as we can see in his epistle to the Galatians, that he calls it a mutilation. It isn't because that the uh, procedure of circumcision is something that is so offensive to God. Indeed, it's done in our nation, of course, for uh, medicinal or, or medical reasons. Of course, among those who are, sti- are, who are still party to that religion that was formed after Jesus came, known as Ju- Judaism, of course, it's a foundation of their particular faith. The problem is with how that action is regarded by teachers that are, have come from God. In this particular case, they tell uh, those who have come to Christ and have been baptized into his name that they need to undergo circumcision in order to complete their salvation. And that, of course, goes against the rock-solid center and foundation of our faith that we're saved by grace alone through faith alone. That's why the apostle says, beware of the false circumcision. Beware of the mutilation." If Christians, of course, listen to these teachers, as the Apostle says in his epistle to the Galatians, they have departed from Christ. It's that important. 
That's why sometimes that things that we do that are indifferent, like uh, maybe the manner in which we decorate the church, or maybe in the, even, even in important things like baptism and the Lord's Supper, we should never think that our confidence in them is just simply going through the motions and doing them. And that, of course, was what was going on in this particular conflict that the apostle had. The important thing is not what goes on on the outside, although we are to comply with God's word, especially in our blessed gift of the sacrament of baptism, which God promises to bring, to bring us into faith by the power of God, his spirit. But it is that there is faith in the heart. The apostle, in taking away the pen from his scribe uh, who was writing down his letter to the Galatians, wrote in large letters because Paul was a little uh, hard of seeing, as as, uh, he says. And he says, uncircumcision or circumcision doesn't matter, but a new creation. And that, of course, is the point that he is making here. Of course, uh, we can say that uh, the, the, the idea here that he's trying to avoid is, as I said, just simply the idea of thinking that if you go through the motions, perhaps for people in the church too, it's, it's kind of the idea, well, I've tried to be good. I've come to church every week. I, I um, donate, I support my church. But if anything, if, if the person who tries to turn to the Lord and being uh, his faithful disciple only thinks that his salvation consists in uh, those outward observances, then they're in very bad spiritual shape, as the apostle says. Of course, the idea too is, is that the important thing is not to follow the works of the law. Remember I said that there are two types of religion. There is the wrong one and there is the right one. The wrong one, of course, says that you should do the works of the law. And that doesn't mean to say that the law isn't from God. It is most certainly from God. But again, the problem is in how it is regarded, how it is made to be the way of salvation. The law is not a ladder to heaven. It is a dead end. There has to be another way of righteousness that the Apostle tells us about. The most important thing, of course, is to remember uh, that it is in Christ as a free gift. The Apostle goes on. He says, okay, let's do, let's do a little boasting uh, con- uh, contest. You know, you guys say that you are, uh, you know, circumcised and you're Israelites and, and you, you've followed the God, but guess what? Me too. In fact, I even have more confidence. I can even boast of more. If anyone has a mind to put confidence in the flesh, I far more circumcise the eighth day. You know, not, it wasn't the tenth day or the twentieth day or the fiftieth year, but on the eighth day, as a little baby, he was circumcised. Of the nation of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law... How much was he for the law, a Pharisee? How much was he for zeal, even the thing that he accused himself for the rest of his life, that he was a persecutor of the church? As to the righteousness according to the uh, religious leaders of Judaism found blameless. Okay, Judaizers, you want to depend on your righteousness, that you're Jews? Guess what? It's not important to God. Then he has this large but that he puts into his epistle. But whatever things were gain to me, those things I have counted as loss for the sake of Christ. More than that, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them but Scubala is the Greek word. Very interesting word. Scubala, so that I may gain Christ and may be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness which comes from God on the basis 
of faith. Let's take a look at that funny little word, scubala, scubala. I remember that my professor in college, uh, Professor Wadowitz, said, that is what we call off-scouring. When, when, when you ladies are uh, washing your dishes in the sink and you've got to watch all, wash all those pots and pans, you know, you have your little scouring pads, your Brillo pads, and you're scouring all of that burned-on food in your pots and pans. And then when you drain out your dirty dishwater, you see that nasty stuff at the bottom of the sink. That's what Professor Wadowitz said. I had a friend pastor that said, that's not really, it does not really uh, give us the contrast of what the apostle is saying here. His word rubbish and off-scouring are weak. What does the word scubala mean? Well, it means dung, manure, the type of thing that goes into the toilet. That is exactly what it means. Anything that is preferred before Christ is something that is considered as worthy of going into the toilet. That's what our text is saying here. That we should not trust in anything but in the righteousness and holiness of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he says that we must be found in him not having a righteousness of our own derived from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. Anything and everything that is placed uh, as more important than that is scubala. And of course, we know that he wrote about many important things in this particular epistle. His beautiful song of Jesus that he sings in chapter 2, of course, is, is the uh, high point of the epistle. But this particular verse is always something that you should treasure and realize is so important for you. Remember that we are in him, in Christ. That is our righteousness. The righteousness that avails before God, that stands us in good stead for judgment day, is not anything that we have done or anything that human beings do, but all of what Jesus Christ has done by his life, death, and resurrection. As many of you as have been baptized into Christ, have clothed yourself with Christ. You are in Christ. And that, of course, shows the confidence of the hymn writer who says, When he shall come with trumpet sound, O oh, may I then in him be found, clothed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. Christ the solid, on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. What comes next in our text? It's not only stopping there that we are in Christ, that Christ wants us to follow him. The Apostle Paul says the, the encouraging words, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death in order that I may attain to the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained it or have already become perfect, but I press on so that I may lay hold of that for which also I was laid hold of by Christ Jesus. Brethren, I do not regard myself as having laid hold of it yet, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal of the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Earlier in this epistle, he said, For me to live is Christ. And that is so important. The world might say, well, all your, your entire faith is based upon this historic man that uh, really wasn't documented in history. But as that wonderful poem says, that no other event in history is more important to the world than this solitary life of our Lord Jesus Christ. And of course, we uh, have the promise that we will be conformed to his death. That, of course, is done in baptism. 
Even as the apostle says, for we were buried with Christ by baptism into death, that in the same way as he was raised for by the glory of the Father, we too should walk in newness of life. That we press on, always looking before us, always looking at the prize of the upward call of God. A lot of times we're sort of beset and troubled by our past. Sometimes we have to learn not only that it's, it's needful for us to repent of those sins, but also for us to forgive ourselves. For people that hate us or dislike us, we can tell them we're not perfect, we're just forgiven. We face our lives in a world that trusting in God's promises for us has caused us, as I said, to be new creations in Christ. We haven't reached perfection yet. John Wesley, the founder of Methodism, thought it's possible to receive a second blessing and be perfect, but no, sorry, John. The righteousness that makes you right before God is only the righteousness of another, the righteousness of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Press on toward the goal, the prize of the upward call in Christ. Fight the good fight, even as the Apostle Paul did. Finish the race, keep the faith, for hereafter will be Reserve for you the crown of righteousness which God, the righteous judge, will award to you and to all who have loved his appearing. May God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand as we turn to Lutheran Service Book 223, the Te Deum Laudamus, as this is being sung by us, our offering and tithes will be brought forward.
Dear Lord Jesus, accept our offering and use it to preach the gospel where we in person cannot go. With hearts united, we ask you to bless the labors of your gospel ambassadors everywhere. Give to the missionaries, pastors, teachers, and lay workers zeal and courage, and to the people among whom they labor, give open hearts to hear and believe. May our love for you cause us to give generous gifts. It is both our privilege and duty to do so in your precious name, dear Lord. Amen. We continue with our worship with the Kyrie, Lutheran Service Book 227. Lord, Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Gracious God, you gave your Son into the hands of sinful men who killed him. Forgive us when we reject your unfailing love and grant us the fullness of your salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of all, you have planted, nurtured, and hedged around your vineyard, the church, You sent your dear Son to give his life for her. Inspire her by your Holy Spirit to yield much fruit for your kingdom and grant that many find shelter on her holy hill through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of the church, you have appointed your visible church in congregations We pray for our own congregation, our Redeemer Lutheran Church, Overland, Missouri, as its voters meet for the solemn task of electing and calling a pastor tomorrow. Grant that according to your gracious will and the guidance of your Holy Spirit, a man may be chosen suitable for the mission and ministry needed in this place. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of life and death, it has pleased you in your wise providence to summon out of this veil of tears to yourself in heaven the soul of our beloved sister in Christ, Mrs. Vera Rissler. Grant comfort to her family during these difficult days in the hope of the resurrection. Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom and finally be saved through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of the nations, you have directed your church to pray for the rule and authority over your world. For the kings and all in authority, guide and protect all in authority in our nation that it may, our nation may be justly and wisely governed, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of love and life, you have given us the solemn task of praying for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We lift up to you today those we know to be in need of your gracious healing, guidance, and strengthening. 
Especially, we wish to ask you to be with um, Reverend David Andrus as he recovers from his very important surgery. Be with him and his wife and family and answer our prayers in his behalf. We also pray that you would be with, comfort, and strengthen George and, and Bonnie Griffith at the loss of their granddaughter, Brianne. We pray that you would comfort them with the knowledge of the resurrection and eternal life. To that end, Lord, we ask your blessing upon all those who are in need of your help, Ed, Mary, Michael, Michael, Sarah, Celia, Harry, Anne, Robin, Tom, Cindy, also Jane, Stefan, Doug, Ruth Ann, Janice, Helen, Evelyn, Sharon, Ron, Ruth Ann, Ruth, Inez, Mel, Sharon, Dan, and Billy. Grant them timely help according to your gracious will through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord of peace and concord, bless the ministry of word and sacrament in this congregation in all of its many forms. To that end, we pray for our preschool, its director and teachers, as they educate, nurture, and care for the children committed to them in this place. Grant freedom from danger and sickness to them according to your gracious and goodwill through our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings being ordered by your governance may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I invite the congregation to be seated as we turn to Lutheran Service Book 664, Fight the Good Fight.
Good morning to all of you, especially to our visitors this morning. We're so pleased and privileged to have you with us this morning. We ask that you make a note that you're here by filling in your name in the uh, uh, attendance sheets in the pews or in the uh, guest book, as our ushers are very eager to know about them. Uh, also for our members, too, we'd like you to make mention of your presence here today uh, but with the attendance sheets. I think all of you have received this particular announcement that with the big red dot. Please uh, take cognizance of this as it's very important uh, with uh, regard to the matters as, as it says. We have just a few announcements. We hope that everyone that came to the golf tournament, tournament yesterday had a wonderful day. I think it was a perfect weather, although a little cool. Uh, tomorrow evening, Monday, October 9th, there will be a very important voters' meeting at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, Wednesday, this Wednesday is the David's Harp Day, as uh, on October 11th, uh, there will be no handbell or choir rehearsals, uh, and that there will be the presentation uh, by the David's Harp organization at 7 p.m. again in the Fellowship Hall. Saturday, this coming Saturday morning, October 14th, the Men's Club and Ladies Guild will be setting up for the sausage dinner, which is a week from today. Uh, meat orders can be picked up from 10 a.m. to 12 noon in the gym. See Ed Heitman, Rick Affalter, or Daryl Weshey this morning if you'd like to place an order to purchase sausage. Sunday, October 15th, of course, there will be no Bible class between services. The sausage dinner will be served from 12 noon to 4 p.m. in the gym. And I've already mentioned it to a pastor of another congregation, and he said he'd like to bring his family to it. I think that's a very good uh, news to us. We can still use more volunteers for service and for the ladies that want to uh, donate their special desserts. We hope that you're able to do that. Please see Ed or Cindy Heitman or Michelle Weshey if you can help in these ways. We'll need volunteers from 11.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Sunday, October 15th. Monday, October 16th, the Ladies' Guild and Men's Club will be meeting at 7 p.m. in the Parish Hall. Uh, Sunday, October 22nd, will be a special single-service Sunday. The Bible class is at 8.15 a.m. The service is at 9.30 a.m. This is very important as the preschool children will be singing and there will be a fellowship brunch to follow in the fellowship hall. Please see Julia Weshi if you would like to donate fruit or a breakfast casserole. Saturday, October 28th, we will have trunk or treat on the upper lot from 4 to 6 p.m. We need cars, candy, and help, so please see Julia Weshi for questions or to help. Cars should try to be there by 3.30 p.m. Sunday, October 29th is Reformation Sunday. We have quite a treat for you. It is the fifth Sunday, so we will have a single service starting at 9.30 a.m., Bible class, of course, is the first at 8.15 a.m. Thank you for uh, hearing the announcements.